take a look outside with live camera. It just gets prettier and prettier. It was a pretty drippy this is, this weekend. A, this is a golf day. It's a golf day. But the it's golf, golf day. the golf well, courses are closed today. Are they? Isn't it? Aren't they closed on Monday? Some of them are. Some of them. Some. Are. Some. I will tell you, David. The winds are going to pick up. But if you know, you're well. It's you, a, which you way you're a low ball then? anyway, right? So you're good. You're going with the wind, man. You can hit that long drive. <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> Add a few yards on. Hey, let me show you the forecast for today. So yeah, it's going to be warm next couple of hours. We'll see those temperatures climb probably close to 80 here for the next couple of hours. The sun's out. We've got a westerly wind. Uh, but then the front kind of uh, takes hold and we start to see temperatures drop a again. It's not a huge drop. Uh, I think what you'll notice more with this front are the gusty winds and we'll get those out of the northwest. Could see some gusts 25 to 30 miles per hour even this evening. Uh, temperatures dropped about 65 at 7 o'clock, 63 at 8 p.m. We'll call it partly cloudy tonight with those uh, stout northerly winds at that point. There's the satellite picture, and the clouds have almost completely cleared Bear County. Now, if you're watching us from east of town, you still got clouds. Gonzales down the Carn City, Quero over to Howitzville, but the rest of the area has cleared out. 77 in New Braunfels. There's that heat, 81 in Hondo, 81 in Creaso Springs. But again, everyone will start to cool down a little bit later today as this front uh, works its way through the entire viewing area. Uh, there's a look at some of the wind gusts too. We're already starting to see those winds pick up, gusting to 28 right now in Hondo, gusting to 19 in Rio Medina. And expect those wind gusts to pick up here in San Antonio soon. Guys. Thank you so much, Justin. 25,000 people are soon going to be the recipients of 25,000 turkey dinners right here in San Antonio. And all that turkey, 550 turkeys are here. The prep begins. Yeah, the 44th annual Raul Jimenez Thanksgiving dinner is now underway with volunteers and chefs getting ready for Thursday. This yearly tradition started by a local businessman and restaurant owner, the late Raul Jimenez, who recognized Thanksgiving dinner was something that many could not afford. So 44 years later, his family is still looking forward to serving this massive holiday dinner. I mean, this is our holiday, right? We don't know anything different than sharing it with the community. But I always say that Thanksgiving is kind of the kick up to the holidays and the giving spirit. We have so many people that come and support us each and every year. It's just fun just knowing that we're doing something good for the community. And not only are they going to feed thousands Thanksgiving Day, but this year the Jimenez dinner is also delivering thousands of meals for families that can't make it to the dinner. As the holiday nears, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration in San Antonio, one of five Texas cities, apparently, with the most traffic deaths during the period. So, according to the NHTSA, from 2012 to 2021, Thanksgiving ranked as the third deadliest driving holiday of the year. It's behind the 4th of July and Labor Day. Now, the main reasons for the crashes and deaths, apparently, are speeding, as well as drinking and driving. The NHTSA says 48% of deadly crashes over the Thanksgiving holiday period were caused, though, by drinking and or speeding. Drinking involved in 28% of our crashes. Speeding, 33%. 12% of the crashes involved both items. The five Texas cities making the list include Houston, Dallas, San Antonio, Fort Worth, and Austin. San Antonio's first ever gun buyback event ended hours early because it ran out of gift cards. Councilman John Courage says more than 900 weapons were traded in yesterday afternoon. That's 300 more than original goal was set. They handed out all those HEB gift cards, as we said, and that added up to $175,000 worth. Gun owners got one for each firearm. Courage says this event is something he has wanted for years. There's too much gun violence in our city. And some of that gun violence takes place in people's homes. And as people were lining up outside the Alamo Dome, they passed by shirts with the names of more than 2,700 victims of gun violence here in Bear County. A little bit more sports news. The NFL's clash of the Titans on Monday Night Football is tonight. A Super Bowl rematch between the Chiefs and the Eagles. Cowboy fans will be keeping a close eye on this one. Will Reeve has a preview of the matchup. Just hours until the most eagerly anticipated game of this NFL season. And the Kansas City Chiefs have won Super Bowl 57. A Super Bowl rematch on Monday Night Football. The Kansas City Chiefs hosting the Philadelphia Eagles. Both teams dominant again this year, led by their star quarterbacks, Patrick Mahomes and Jalen Hurts. Who doesn't want to see the rematch of the Super Bowl, right? Two of the best teams would be a great game, baby. 
Chiefs versus Eagles also means Kelsey versus Kelsey. Eagles center Jason and Chiefs tight end Travis making history last year as the first brothers to face off in the Super Bowl. The brothers hyping up the showdown on their weekly podcast, New Heights. Winning this game will not undo the fact that we lost the Super Bowl. Hopefully uh, we can beat the Chiefs for the first time in my entire career. No. Since the Chiefs' thrilling 38-35 comeback win in Arizona in February, the Kelsey's profile has only grown. Travis dating Taylor Swift having a lot to do with that. Her appearances at games quickly turning Swifties into football fans. But tonight, it's all about football. Two of the league's best getting to write another chapter in their rivalry. Once again, that was ABC's Will Reeve. Kickoff for the game tonight, 7-15, right here on KSF 12. Governor Greg Abbott announcing that he is endorsing former President Donald Trump on his 2024 run. The governor and the former president both in Edinburgh, Texas yesterday. The two thanking service members deployed at the border as part of Abbott's Operation Lone Star. Trump said this endorsement from Abbott was a, quote, tremendous honor, unquote. Both Abbott and Trump blame the current White House administration for the record number of migrant crossings happening at the border. We have a president of the United States of America who is not securing our border. The endorsement from Abbott comes after Trump promised to enact several hardline immigration policies, including re-implementing Title 42. That was a COVID health policy that was ended by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. But he also promised to build more border wall. And President Joe Biden turns 81 today. He's marking his big day with a family celebration as well as the time-honored pre-Thanksgiving annual turkey pardon. Biden's advanced age has some making that a big issue as he campaigns for another term in the White House. If elected in 2024, he would be 86 at the end of his second term. If you're looking for a way to give back this week, there's still some time to donate a new pair of shoes and socks to a child in need. The San Antonio Police Department Share the Shoes campaign benefits Zapatos, and you can drop off any shoe, new shoe donations or sock donations at the SAPD substations all around the city. It's a great cause, and it's something your kids are out of school. It's something you can show them how to do. Go shopping for some shoes with your kids and donate them. And don't forget about the older kids. Uh, other requested items for shoes or for shoes for wider feet, again, socks and donations are going to be accepted all the way through December 12th. Still ahead, our Salvation Army kettle is officially out. What you can do to help us get this Hollis Day season funded. And the Salvation Army needs your help this holiday season, why their Angel Tree program is in jeopardy. The local Salvation Army's Angel Tree program brings holiday joy to 6,000 kids across the Alamo City every December. But that mission is in desperate need of some room to get their operation underway. The space used to sort gifts and other donated items is not going to be ready in time. So now the Salvation Army needs somewhere to do all that work. They're hoping a local business or someone with warehouse space will house the Angel Tree program for the next few weeks. They need a space with about 20,000 square feet, air conditioned and some running water. It's a gesture that could save Christmas for thousands of kids and parents in San Antonio. So if you have or know about a space that could be the Salvation Army temporary toy shop, all I have to do is call that number 352-2000. That number also posted under this story on our website, ksat.com. It is the Christmas season, and that means the annual Salvation Army's Parade of Kettles competition is in full swing. That's also happening. You can help out right now. Take out your phone and scan this QR code. Local businesses and media compete to raise the most money to help families in need this holiday season. KSAT 12 is being represented by team captain Daniela Ibarra this year. This is a TikTok video that she made of her kettle. She's very proud of it. It's uh, all the it's all about our KSAT mascot, Mike. You can check it out. Uh, you can see the whole web video on our website, KSAT.com. And from now until midnight on December 24th, KSAT will be competing to raise the most money with these kettles to help families around Bear County. We're going to have all the details about that, too, 
on KSET.com. Maybe Mike will show up and help Daniela out, taking some coins. There you go. Hopefully people got cash these days. They could drop People do box. not carry cash around very They're often. Do you some. still jingle, you know, coins in your pockets, guys? Uh, ca- cash? What is this? <laughs> Stop. I don't... And there's these things called coins. <laughs> Do they Venmo? Do they Venmo? Uh, 79 so far today. 67 was the lowest. Hey, pal. Averages are 70 and 48. The record is 85 set back in 2011. I do think we may get into the 80s briefly here over the next couple of hours before temperatures fall down. Uh, with a front coming through, a front is making its way through Bear County as we speak. We'll take a look at that coming up. All right, this is kind of a gross one. San Antonio rank it high in a recent study, but it's not for something that you want to see. It's for cockroaches. Ooh. Okay, really? let me explain. Okay. There's a new study out from a company called Pest Gnome, a home services company that says that San Antonio is ranked as the second roachiest city in the U.S. The only city to beat us is Houston. The study shows San Antonians had 28% of homes that showed signs of roaches in the last 12 months. The biggest reason for the pests, the heat. Well, okay. The bugs love the heat, but they don't like to get cold, and it doesn't get cold enough to kill them off. The study says they can't survive in temperatures below 45 degrees. So the best way to keep them out, keep your home clean and tidy. But if they don't love the heat, then they should be... All right, look at the list of the top 25. This is it. And you know what is markedly missing from this list. Uh oh. New Orleans, Louisiana. Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Pest Gnome, you are wrong. Wow. There are two cities in Louisiana that are far. I still have nightmares. Okay. Get her my soapbox. Let her go. Okay. I'm very strongly about this. I feel very strongly oh. about that. Fun and facts. and it's and that is one of the horrible things about climate. Yeah, well, everybody, everybody wants climate, you know, don't listen. have climate change. Let it kill the bugs. I, can, I would rather have warm weather and deal with a few roaches than not. But, but if they're in your house, then they shouldn't be alive because it's cold in your house. Okay. It's not 45 degrees. <laughs> it's, not, it's not that cold. I want to see what your AC bill looks like. You know, cockroaches have been around since the, uh, since the dinosaurs. So well, they'll away. survive anything. They will. Uh, 76 right now. We've got just a few clouds out there. Northwesterly winds at 13 miles per hour. And uh, yes, front's coming through. Uh, right now it's just starting to move into Bear County. Does not bring any rain with it. It's going to bring gusty winds. That's the main thing here. We're already starting to see some gusts up to 26 in Kerrville, gusting in 28 in Hondo, gusting to near 20 in Rio Medina and Castroville. And you're going to see the winds start to be gusty here very soon in San Antonio if they're not already. Uh, you're also going to see the humidity go away. Uh, it's been thick, right? If you stepped outside, you know the, the air is thick. We had the drizzle and fog this morning. That gets swept away by this front, too. So give it another couple of hours, and the air really dries out. We've got a westerly wind. One thing that westerly wind does, though, is warm us up, at least briefly. I think we get up close to 80 next couple of hours before temperatures start to slowly fall off. 75 at 4 o'clock, 73 at 5 p.m. So this is not a big-time cold front. Uh, in the sense that we're not going to see an immediate drop off, but we will get some cold mornings coming up and some pretty comfortable afternoons. Temperatures will only make their way up into the 60s tomorrow for highs as a comparison. So, yes, uh, it does make a difference. And as we look at the satellite picture, clouds are pretty much gone at this point. Uh, they've moved out of San Antonio. We still have some clouds across our eastern counties, and we have a newly formed tornado watch box here that's going to include far east texas and louisiana and this is an area that certainly could see some rough weather next couple of hours uh, and some tornadoes the setup is there for that so if you're traveling east uh, know that that uh, is going to be a problem and that's out ahead of that cold front all the energy off to our north and east we just missed out on the rain almost completely other than a little bit of drizzle this morning and yes there is a risk for severe weather not only where you saw that tornado watch box but further east as well across parts of Mississippi and Alabama a little bit later this evening. Here's a look at the future cast wind gusts. So right now we're getting those gusts out west, but that spreads towards San Antonio. And let me take you to 8 p.m. tonight. Gusts to 30 miles per hour here in town. We'll see some gusts a little bit higher than that in spots. And even going into tomorrow morning, it's going to be windy, cold, not cold, but chilly tomorrow morning with gusty winds. It'll make it feel colder. Uh, gusts to 35 potentially uh, overnight into tomorrow morning. 
it's not until midday tomorrow that these winds start to calm down and go away. Long term forecast, we get another little area of low pressure that digs out over Mexico. This does come across the area on Thursday. I think it brings maybe, maybe a shower. The air is going to be really dry. Uh, and a little bit more cloud cover for Thanksgiving. Uh, but all in all, it's not going to have a lot of effect on our weather. Other than with those clouds in place, it'll be a little bit cooler. So here it is in the seven day forecast 63 tomorrow. That's the drop off. We're losing 17 degrees because of that front. And notice the morning lows are in the 40s, 41 Wednesday morning, 63. 59 Thursday, out of cloud cover keeps temperatures down a little bit. Back in the 60s Friday and Saturday before we get another front on Sunday, guys. Thank you, Justin. Still ahead, how one local high school student plans to flip out <laughs> at Duquesne University. You'll see what we mean in a minute. Acrobatics and tumbling, relatively new sport in the collegiate level. As KSAT 12 producer Haley Powers tells us, a local senior will be representing San Antonio by joining Duquesne University's inaugural tumbling team. Mireya Maimi is a senior at Johnson High School, and earlier this month, she celebrated a huge accomplishment, signing to do acrobatics and tumbling at Duquesne University in Pittsburgh. The university announced in 2022 the addition of an acrobatics and tumbling team to their program. That team will begin their first competition season in the fall of 2024. Maimi knew on her visit that she would be a part of that team. As a school, when I stepped on campus, campus, I felt like I could call that place home. Miami's love for gymnastics started at a young age, and she says the sport has shaped her into the person she is today. Discipline and perseverance, I think, are the biggest things that I've taken away as a person from this sport. She trains at 360 Elite in New Braunfels. Her coach, Karen Medine, says Miami has stepped into a leadership role in the gym. She was recently voted our first team captain for our, our new gym here at 360 Elite, which has been really special because they were voted uh, by the athletes. Through her years as a gymnast, Miami has had her good and bad days, but she says it's important for all young athletes to realize those bad days are necessary. The hard days as they're happening are hard to get through, but once you're looking back on them and what you've accomplished, then you realize that the bad days are necessary because without the bad days, you can't, you have nothing to learn from. Miami signed with Duquesne University on an academic and athletic scholarship. Haley Powers, KSAT 12 News. Congratulations to her. It's fun to see kids like that get some of the off main sports and get these scholarships to go to these, these big time. We well, need them. Yeah, that's Absolutely. great. Absolutely. All right, we're going to head over to SA Live where the big turkey is the. Oh, whoa, don't call him that. Don't talk about Mike that way. <laughs> Well, it is Thanksgiving week, and of course, we are talking turkey, and yes. we are headed over to Acadiana Cafe, or actually, Jen is over there at Acadiana Cafe. Hey, Jen. Hello. Yes, that's right. The deep frying is underway. We have Dave Seller, the owner here, and he's working on these turkeys. He's also going to share a marinade that you can do at home and a fun and easy leftover recipe. All that's coming up, guys. Hope you're hungry. <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. And when you think about your turkey and which way you like to eat it, yeah, you're probably going to get hungrier. Here Roasted. we go. Scan that QR code. Smoked. Deep fried. Scan the QR at? code. Yes. Oh, roasted, roasted is in the lead. It has jumped to the, the lead. The old fashioned way. <laughs> if you have turkey and you need something to wash it down, Stella Public House is here. This is a gossamer. Yes. The gossamer cocktail. We're going to show you a few Ooh. more perfect fall cocktails for your Thanksgiving table and tell you about a fundraiser they're doing. Our dear friend Andrea Cook, Mad Science, is here. And yes. what you got going on there? Um, we're going to be talking about non-Newtonian fluids. Ooh. Does that sound like good for Thanksgiving? Non-Newtonian <laughs> fluid. Yes. You kind of think of Run side dish on there. Yes. <laughs> and how you can make that. Great way to keep the kids occupied if you are cooking the Thanksgiving bird. And we are going to show you what one local boutique has for Black Friday and the rest of the holiday season. I feel so non-Newtonian today. So. That's so, you, you need a t-shirt that says non-Newtonian. We'll be back with more if you dare. Yay. <laughs>